tabernacle. And I've been back many times, an hour or two, or maybe be in for a service. This is my first time to come back or anywhere to try to hold a revival. We're starting tonight. A revival, to my opinion, doesn't consist of, well, bringing in new members. A uh, revival doesn't consist of a bunch of conversions, although those things go along with the ri- revival. But a revival is to revive what you've already got, just to get them revived up. And now uh, we have a very wonderful pastor here, Brother Neville, who's sitting on the seat just in front, a little horse tonight uh, from a cold. And I'm going to leave this really home. I used to be when I was here. I was the pastor, I was a song leader, I took up the offerings, I paid the debts, I was a janitor, and I was a carpenter, <laughs> I just cleaned the ashes out of the stove and <laughs> done whatever come along to be done, and worked at the public service company on the side. Seventeen years of that I uh, was here, and I'm very happy for this little old structure tonight, and it's uh, uh, certainly a, like a birthplace to me. Not very uh, elaborate, but it's uh, not so gigantic, but it's home. And <laughs> I feel very comfortable, and I'm so happy for it. And now our meetings are going to consist, maybe, we have given out for five nights up till Sunday night, and we're going to teach out of the Scriptures, teaching. Now, in this teaching, it will consist of nothing but Bible. Now, and then and in, the, in the meeting, <clears throat> I, I want to make real clear, so in the beginning now, that we'll have the real background. I believe you, we want that first. We'll see the rules and the regulations and what all we do so that before we have prayer and start the services. And now, I'm intending, if the Lord willing, to speak tonight on the church, the five nights on the church. The first night tonight is Israel in Egypt. And tomorrow night, the Lord willing, is out at the Red Sea. And then the next night before the brazen serpent. Then on Saturday night at Kadesh Barnea. And on Sunday night, we want to take them over in the homeland. And that's all scriptural teachings. And bring your Bible because we're just scripture after scripture. Then he calls that been coming in to pray for the sick and so forth. But I've kind of kept away from it. I'm trying to keep my mind strictly on Bible teaching. And now I don't know what our Lord will do. We're awaiting the call for overseas, to go overseas. I thought this is a wonderful time. Maybe from then, maybe Brother Neville will feel better for that time and can pick up from right there. Maybe and go on this revival. I'd like to see it go on through Easter. I'd like to have a great big baptism here Easter morning. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Just the time for a, a great bunch of uh, to be baptized. I believe there's some young folks here to be baptized. And now, while I'm on the question of the young folks, now we have a few visitors, I guess. I'm not familiar who does come here and who doesn't. I just don't know the 12th chapter to begin. And you with pencils and paper. We have some extra Bibles if someone would desire to follow us in scriptures and would want one, one of the elders would be glad to bring it to you just now if you'll raise your hand. We have five or six Bibles here. The others are just New Testaments, rather than going to be in the Old Testament most tonight. <clears throat> In the studying of the Scripture, I have uh, been accused and do a great deal of typology, which typology is typing the old with the new. I'll tell you why I do that. It's because of this, maybe sometimes the, the great words that scholars and so forth try to give the Bible, it's its uh, terms or pronouncing, I'm satisfied to take the King James for mine. It's waved the storms longer than any translation yet. And 
I just believe it that way, and I believe that all the Scripture teaches that all of the Old Testament was a shadow of the things to come. Therefore, if I am going towards that wall and my shadow is there before me, it will declare something like I am when I come there. It would show whether I was a four-footed beast or whether it was a fowl or whatever it was. The shadow will declare it. And the Old Testament was a shadow or a type of the New Testament. All the Old Testament pointed to Calvary. I believe by the help of the Holy Spirit that through the, the weeks coming, how long I don't know, but I can prove from every chapter of the Old Testament spoke of Jesus Christ, and everything was fulfilled in him, and we in him are complete. How simple God has made it. In Christ we are complete. Now, man has always tried to save himself and do different things to be saved by, but it's never has been in the New Testament by any works of our own. It's by grace are you saved through faith. That only thing that can save you is grace. Now, I had the hands raised a while ago, not knowing who is members here of the church and who isn't, to see how it leveled up with Christianity. And it's seemingly that you're about 99% Christians here tonight. And I hope that the others are now. Now, the book of Genesis is the seed chapter of the Bible. That is the beginning. The word Genesis means the beginning. And now, tomorrow night, we have to go into Exodus to get the children. The word Exodus comes from the word of, of calling out, going out. The children was, of Israel was Exodus. In their Exodus, they went out of Egypt into the promised land that God had given them. Now, in order to correctly get the picture of the church of then and type it with the day, you've got to go back into the seed to bring it into Exodus before it can have the Exodus. Now, you are bringing it into the, where you can see where the church is and how they settled in Egypt, and then you'll see how God called them out. And then through the rest of the week, we'll go straight to the scriptures like that. And tonight we want to use many, many scriptures, if the Lord willing, on teaching. Now, the first place we want to find out is why this has been the greatest thing that I've found among Christian people throughout the entire world has been a fear. They're always afraid. And when a little sickness strikes, they're afraid. Many times I wonder sometimes, and I'm along with you, but now what I'm trying to do tonight and in this week to come is to try to drive that fear away by God's Word. Now, you would come to me and say, well, Brother Branham, I believe this. Now, I believe that there's only one way in the world to prove. Now, I couldn't go by somebody's experience, somebody's church ritual. There's only one true proof of, the, of what it's all about. That's God's Word. Now, if God's Word says a certain thing, then I've got to believe that that is the truth. Recently, there was a young minister came to me, and he told me of a certain situation, and said he prayed over it, and he said the Lord revealed to him that it was a certain way, and I looked at him a little bit, and I said, Brother, that's very lovely. I said, I, I appreciate the Lord doing that for you, but let me tell you something. It's contrary. He said, well, the vision come from God. I said, it couldn't have, brother, because it was contrary to the Word. Now, we must prove all things by the Scripture, not what, if it's contrary to my faith, and yet the Scripture says so, the Scripture's right and I'm wrong. See. The Scripture is always right, and the only way you can do anything is come back to the Scripture. 
Now, is that true? Amen. Now, I, I like to hear you say amen when you believe it. You see, amen means so be it. Now, now we cannot, someone was asking me the other day, well, even this day, about a certain person that was a, a successful person in a certain thing that they were doing, and said, oh, brother Bill, the Lord must be in I said, he can't. Oh, said they're getting soul saved. I said, it can't be. Because if it is, it's contrary to his word. Then God isn't going to say one thing and then say another thing. He's going to tell one thing all the way through. See, God can't lie. God's infallible. His words are, in order to be God, he has to be sovereign, you see. And he has, and now you say, well, don't you think the, if, if God did a certain thing here, he, although his word does say, I said, no. The Bible said, he that takes away or adds to anything that's in this book will be Amen. taken out of the, of the book of life for him. Amen. So there's the reason. Always by everything, not by experience, or not by what it looks like, but by what God's Word says. Amen. Now the New Testament, Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven, would come and teach any other thing than that which you've heard. That's Galatians 1.8, if you want to put it down. Let him be unto you accursed. Now, therefore, let's go back now and get the beginning and find out how sure this word is. Now, bear this in mind, and as we glean through this Bible, you'll see that the cogs of God's wheel turn slow but sure. It may look like it's a million miles away, but she's grinding right up there all the time. And one of these days, it'll be here. Now, no matter what, you just take any of the... Wish we had time now to have about a six or eight months Bible study here, to take the book of Genesis and never leave Genesis. And I believe within the next uh, three, three or four weeks of studying in Genesis and see how every thread of it goes right down through the Bible, every word of it. Now, I've had two years I've been studying in Genesis now, myself, and still I'm on my second term through it and not even halfway through it again. Why, it's been, I've taken weeks just on two or three verses. And you find out that in that seed, if you want to know what kind of a crop you're going to have or what this is growing up in the field, go back to find out what the seed is. The seed will produce just exactly what it is. It'll produce its kind. A corn will bring a corn, a cockleburr a cockleburr, a wheat a wheat. Whatever it is, it will produce just what the seed was. And all these cults and uprises and all these things and isms today, by God's grace, it's every one written in Genesis where it had its beginning back there. And it's just got another name. But you watch the working of the Spirit in that day and watch how it's working today, and you'll see it's the very same thing. And friends, some of it is striking. You'd be surprised to know that some of it is in the highest ecclesiastical realms. Now, just look at that spirit, how it rolls up back there in Cain, how it come on down through Ham, on out through Nimrod, into Babylon, out of Babylon, pull down into the days of the coming of Jesus. Teachers, Bible students, and they fail to recognize the Lord Jesus Christ. And there they was standing there, polished scholars, holy man, righteous, knowing the word just ever letter up where it was and how it was written. Knowed it by heart through and through every scroll and everything had to be born in a certain lineage of man or a priesthood to come our or tribe to come out to be a priest. Polished scholars, seminary students today would be a back number upside of one of them, and yet fail to know Jesus. And when Jesus come, they were holy men, and Jesus said, "You're your father, the devil." Said, "You do err, not knowing the power of God, neither the word of God." Could you imagine the Lord Jesus Christ calling a holy, righteous, scholar, Bible student a devil? But he did. And now if you go back, you find out where it comes from. And watch, it's moving right out today in a terrible force. All around. It behooves you, my brother and sister, to consider what you're listening at. And don't you never underestimate Satan's power for deceiving. Don't you never underestimate him. He's smooth as he can be. And the Antichrist spirit isn't communism. 
No, the Antichrist spirit is so close like the real thing till it will deceive the very elect, if possible. Jesus said so, Matthew 24. It's a religious spirit. Oh, why, Cain and Abel were brothers. The crow and the dove sat on the same roost. Esau and Jacob were brothers. Judas and Jesus was in the same church, one the preacher and the other the treasure. See there? All the way. It's just the deceiving. The lie that Cain that Satan told Eve was 90% truth. 90% truth. And the lie that you can tell. I've heard man bypass pieces in the Scripture just to keep from... It hurts the theology. See? But if, if, if this part's right, that part's right. Let's put it together and make it fit through the whole Bible. Amen. Now, in the beginning when God... We, we won't have time in this to go back to there, but we're going to start up here at the beginning of the church. And that was when God... Now, the word church means called out. The called out people. And I believe in every denomination under the heavens today, there's got to be some good people in every one of them. And I believe that if Jesus comes, it'll be a called out group. And I believe that we're way away from the coming of the Lord as far as the church is concerned. Our conditions are in no conditions for the coming of the Lord. We can't have faith for divine healing, let alone to be raptured. There's got to be something happen. Why, somebody speak of rapture and they say, what are you talking about? Some of the pe- members of the church talk about divine healing. I don't believe in such. They can't see, say, well, I believe he hypnotized them. Well, how could that person ever go on a rapture? How could he resurrect from the dead when there's nothing to resurrect from? There's nothing there to resurrect him. It's just a make-believe, mental, psychic. When you say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that's all right. But, brother, if that isn't coming from the heart, why, it's only mentally. And you can't come from the heart until the Holy Ghost bears record of it. Jesus said no man, or the Bible said no man can say Jesus is the Christ only by the Holy Ghost. And you can't say it in yourself. The Holy Spirit has to speak it from you. Look, when when Peter confessed him, he said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjon, for flesh and blood is not revealed to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now I say, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Isn't that right? So you see where we're at. Now, of course, now we're going to start in the beginning. God calling down and called out his people. Am I speaking too loud that it talks or not loud enough? A little too loud. I'm sorry. I, this thing's got an awful voice, and I've been used to great big old barns and auditoriums and outdoors and things, and I guess I yell a little too loud. I don't mean to be yelling at you. Now, in Genesis, the 12th chapter, we start for our first tonight. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless them that bless thee. And I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and will curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Abraham, coming from Babylon, with his father down into Shinar, the the Shinar, the, the valley of Shinar, where the souls of many journeyed after the destroying of Babylon or the confusion taken place. Abraham's father, parent, brought Abraham and his uh, loved ones down into Shinar. And all that land, among all those people, God found favor with one one man found favor with God, rather. Now, I want you to notice, that is the beginning of Christianity, of the church. And I want you to notice, it wasn't because Abraham was a good man. It was because God elected and chose Abraham. It wasn't Abraham choosing God. It was God choosing Abraham. Can you see it? And now watch. Now, as it was then, 
so is it today. It isn't you choosing God, it's God choosing you. Now, this may be very strong. Now I want you to notice, immediately after choice, election, it's separation from everything else. As soon as he calls, he elects, calls, then when he calls, he separates you from everything that hangs on to you. That proves that it isn't a denomination. It isn't two or three people together. He expects every individual. Amen. It's an individual affair with every person. It isn't because my mother there is saved that I'm saved. It's because God chose me in Christ. I want you to see it. Not you choosing yourself, not your choice, how much you prayed, when you turned a new page, you had nothing to do with it. God. Oh, my. When you get to see what's true, you say, you mean that, that I, I didn't turn to the Lord? No, sir. You had no way at all of turning to the Lord. Your whole nature, your whole makeup was against God. God called you. It's always been that way. In the Garden of Eden, when man sinned first, look at the nature of a sinner. Hiding. But it, it should have been Adam calling God. It was Adam hiding and God calling Adam. You see it? That's the nature of a sinner. Hide. Run away. Get behind something. But God calling. Oh, my. Grace. Amazing grace. God calling. And now notice, you say, oh, that was Adam and Eve. It's always through the Bible the same. Jesus said, no man can come to me except my Father draws him. Is that right? Now, that's the Word. And that's the way we want it, the Word. Then you know where you're standing. How many in here have, are Christians, and I know that you're Christians, that something in you says you are a Christian? That's it. All right? You see? Why, you should be the happiest people in the world. You should just believe that. My, That's easy. Take God's word for it. Now, before you can become a Christian, God called you. Not you calling God. God called you. Now, he called Abraham, and he's the father of us all, the faith. Notice. Now, he said, Abraham, now it's election. I want to get on that election strong because it's the truth. Now, you didn't, you didn't become a Christian just a coincidence because you become a Christian before you was in this world. Before you were born, God ordained you to be a Christian from the Garden of Eden, from before the foundation of the world. Or you say, is that right, brother? That's the truth. God, before there was ever you know to anything, there was a time that you knew your, your mind is darkened to that now. There's only been one man on earth that knew that he was before, and that was Jesus. He said, Glorify me, Father, with the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. He was the incarnate God. He could move back there and know what it was. But our minds are blackened there. But we were ordained, predestinated. You know what predestinate means? The destination of anything was pre-saw by God. Amen. That's not skim milk now. Notice. I believe that's something. We better go over there just a minute. Turn over with me to Ephesians, the first chapter. And let's read just a little because I'm afraid you're, you're missing that. And you're thinking that, that I'm saying that I am not. Listen closely now 
We'll get down to the church in a few moments, or after a bit. Now, Paul is speaking, addressing Ephesians 1, directly, straight to the shoulder, to the church. That's what we're doing tonight. This is not for babies. This is for grown-ups. Hey. Not for babies, little babies. I got a little one back there, just learned to walk, he'd boot and fall down, get back up, and he thought he was doing something great. I was that way one day, but now I'm a man. Hey. I put away childish things. Now we got to come to full doctrine. I like good old shouting meetings where we just clap our hands or shout and have a good time, have great, powerful services and things, dance on the brothers as it were. But wait! Then when the showdown time comes, you don't know where you're standing. Let's get back and find out. Let's find out what's making us do that. Let's get back to the foundation. See where we're at. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. I just love it. No seminary sent me out. <laughs> the will of God to them which are at Ephesus. Now watch. He's addressing it. To the faithful in Jesus Christ. Watch. Addressing it straight to who? Not the sinner. Not the babies. But to them that's grown up. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. For the will of God. Look. Grace be unto you, and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, my. See who is addressing? Not a bunch of babies. The people that sit in heavenly places and been blessed. Now I said, you know something. You've been taught, and you're saved. And I want to tell you what it's all about. Oh, I like that, don't you? I want to put your feet up in the heavens a little while instead of being so earthbound. So now I want to tell you why. I want to give you a little, a little, a little boost, a little revival, a little stimulation. Hey. Amen. I like the stimulation. Kind of builds you up. Especially when you know where you can say, it's thus saith the law. Now I want to speak to you, he says, you that sets in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, been blessed together with all spiritual blessings, the gifts of God manifesting, divine healing, prophecies, everything going forth. Now you're grown up people who want to talk to you. I'm addressing this to you. Now watch. According. Amen. Now here it is. I hope it really I'm going to let it soak in right real good because it'll do good and maybe go plumb into the bones. Hey. According as He hath chosen us in Him. Who did? I heard it and I come. No, no, you never. He hath chosen, hath passed him, hath chosen us the church, in him, how long ago, Paul, last week, or when you helped the revival? No. Before the foundation of the world. Now you can ride on the cloud. See? He done what? He chose us in him, Christ, before the foundation of the world. Wish we had a little time to go to Job 7, 37 and see that where he said, Where was you when I laid the foundations of the world? Before I laid the foundations of the world. Declare to me where they're fast in that. Well, where was you when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy? Telling to Job, Buckle up yourself like a man I want to speak to you. Now, Paul says he chose us in him the church before the foundation of the world. Now watch. That we should be holy 
not our own holiness. We said, you believe in the Holy Spirit, Brad? Sure. Not in mine, in His. My holiness is nothing. His is perfect. Well, you say, then you believe that you can drink or... No, I never said that. Look, a grain of wheat can only produce wheat. It can't produce cuckleburrs. There's no desire in it, there's no life in it to produce cuckleburrs with. And if we're in Christ Jesus, don't be deceived. You better search this close now. See? If you keep on saying, well, I, I don't condemn me to do this and you're going to condemn me to do that, things of the world, now I'm going to hurt you just a little bit, pull the feathers back the other way. But it's this one sure evidence you have never been to Christ. You have never been born again. He that loves the world are the things of the world. The love of God's not even in him. Now, if you just quit doing it because you know you ought to do it and uh, quit doing this, that's the sign that you haven't got nowhere yet. When that thing becomes dead in you and the nature of it's gone away, there's another person in there and it can only produce the Holy Spirit that was in Christ in you produces the Christ-like life. Nothing you do, what he did. He chose that before the foundation of the world. Someone said, well, I know I got saved because I quit smoking. That wasn't why I got saved. That wasn't why you got saved. You got saved because God chose you before the foundation of the world to be saved. That's the scripture teaching. Amen. Now you see, we begin to find out it's not us. It's him. See? He chose us. Abraham couldn't say, well, bless God, I come down from the Tower of Babylon. Hallelujah. That's why I got saved. He saved the whole bunch then if that's the reason he done it. See, he didn't do that. He elected Abraham. And that was the very beginning of our salvation that was given to man when he called him and elected him and predestinated him and give him a promise and made a covenant with Abraham and his seed forever. Amen. Now, we could go ahead here and read a full chapter in that, but we haven't the time. Now, God called, watch, when he called Abraham here, he called him by election, not because he was, because God was. And he called him out of his people and blessed him and told him, that I'm going to save you. And on down here he says, and you shall come to me in a ripe old age. Before he'd done anything to deserve it, God chose him, told him, and not only you, but your seed after you. Oh, my. Notice. And he returned the ninth, eighth verse. Now let's read on down here a little farther on this other thing. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance. Now watch, he did right there what God told him not to do. He took Lot, his nephew, and Abraham took his daddy. But he never told him to take his daddy, but he took him anyhow. And any Bible reader, you read this in Genesis tomorrow when you have time, notice that it was a fly in the ointment until the old man died. He was a stumbling block all the way along, and so was Lot. God called Abraham. Not Lot. He called Abraham, not his daddy. Well, you say, what about Sarah? A man and his wife are one. See? They are one flesh. The Bible said so. All right. But he called Abraham and asked him and told him to separate himself from all he had and to come over into a strange land. Look, a separation 
going in a strange land that you know nothing about, that's Christianity, separating from the things of the world because God has called you, going into another land to dwell among people that you know nothing about, to be a pilgrim. Amen. When I think of it, I can just hardly hold myself down. Pilgrim. Stranger. Old Jacob and dying, standing before Pharaoh. He said, I have been so many years in my pilgrimage. Amen. What was it? He began to come to himself. The little fellow had done so bad. He knew that he was only a pilgrim here. Now, notice. We come on down to the 8th verse, and God promises Abraham here how he's going to save him and his seed after him. Now, he made the covenant unconditional. It isn't just exactly that he made it just because that he was a, that he was a Abraham. He didn't say, now, Abraham, if you will do this, if you will do that. He said, Abraham, I have done it already. It ain't nothing you've got to do. I've done it myself. Amen. Oh, my. When I think of that, God did it himself unconditional. God's covenant is unconditional. You say, well, brother, I quit eating meat. I don't do this. I, brother, that don't have one thing to do with it. It isn't whether you eat meat or don't eat meat or keep Sabbath days or new moons or whether you go to Sunday school on Sunday or what this is. You are saved unconditional. Then you say, Brother Branham, then if I'm saved, glory to God, I can do what I want to. Yes, sir. And if you're saved, brother, you have no desire of nothing of the world, and your whole heart centered on that. You can't keep away from it. But as long as there's a tub there, you know there's something wrong yet. Now, election. God called Abraham. Told him he was going to save him. Unconditional. Now, let's go over here. I have to promise God a little later. I want you to go to Genesis 15, 7 with me here just a moment. Let's read here just a, for a few moments. All right. And the Lord said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur, of Chaldea, and give unto thee this land to inherit it. And he said... Lord God, wherein shall I know that I shall inherit it? Now, Abraham, after coming out of the land, the Chaldeans, the land, city of Ura, of the Chaldeans, the land of Shinar, separated, come out, look at that, just like Christians today, still wandering. Look. And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a sheep goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Now, tomorrow, I want you to go ahead and read that as you're marking it down. On down, I'll quote it because of time, space. Because I don't want to keep you too long. I want you to come back tomorrow night so we can get right into this. We're just laying a, a ground tonight. It's the foundation, see? Now, he took these heifer, sheep, goat, and a ram, and two t- a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And he divided the ram and heifer and so forth and laid them out. Put the turtle dove in there and without Z, without dividing it. And he kept the birds off of it till the sun went down. And God came down on Abraham to confirm that covenant. Come down to now, Abraham. Now, I'm going to prove to you what I'm going to do. And he, uh, and you know, many of you people who were sharing church years ago, I taught the same thing. Yes, yes, sir. Back in 1949, I was teaching all right, she had it marked your body. Look, then he come down and showed to Abraham what he was going to. First, he put Abraham to sleep. Now, Abraham, you don't have nothing to do with it. Now, to you that's trying to save yourself, I have understood that in the church, the tabernacle, after sitting under that teaching, that many people left the tabernacle, went out into cults and so forth to, to believe all kinds of everything there is to be believed. Stop. Some of them would quit eating meat, and some of them kept their Sabbath days and new moons, and I don't, I guess, done sacrifices and everything. After really refusing to accept the word of God, that goes to show what it was in here. Paul said they went out because it wasn't of us. See, that's right. See, that's true. 
the Holy Spirit will take a hold of the Word of God. Those things to a showdown will be proven they're wrong. And I said, Abraham, he put him to sleep. He said, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. How I'm going to keep my covenant. And he took those animals. And now watch, when Abraham went to sleep, showing death, must come to every creature. Then before him went a burning furnace. And a burning furnace represented hell, that every sinner deserved to go to hell. And then beyond that, with a sacrifice on the hill, went a little white light that went in between each one of those pieces of sacrifice. Covenant! If you notice, there's been many ways people's made covenant. A lot of times, we today, how do we make a covenant? Say, shake, give me five. That's agreement. That's our covenant, isn't it? In the old days, they used to make, in China, you know how to make a covenant? They throw salt on one another. That's a covenant in China. See? And they make different covenants, different people's uh, customs. But the oriental custom was to kill a beast and stand in between this beast and then ride out. Over here you find Leviticus. And they ride out here, their agreement. And that agreement is torn too over this dead beast and to take an oath over the dead beast that if they break this covenant, may their body be as this dead beast. And they give each one a piece. And then they're sent away. And when they come back, those two pieces has to dovetail. Just exactly the same pieces. How beautiful! God making a covenant. Showing, pre-showing, that I have sworn that I'll do it in your seed. I'll bless all the nations of the world. Read it. I'll bless the Gentiles. I'll bless the black man, the yellow man, the white man. I'll bless everyone. Do your seed, for out of you will come kings and princes. How are you going to do it, Lord? I'll show you how. And he showed him on that hillside where those pieces represented. And any Bible scholar here knows that each one of those was a clean animal that represented the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He was the ram. He was the heifer that made the waters of separation. When they had the waters of separation through now, we had the washing by the water by the word of the separation from sin through the word, through believing. And the pigeon and the turtle dove was divine healing. And all in Christ. Amen. Amen. There, God showed Abram what he was going to do. That through the seed of Isaac, he would bring forth his only begotten son, Christ. And swing him out between the heavens and earth when the sun went down to blackness over the earth. And there he tore him apart. God pulled his soul out of him. And he wrote a covenant with the families of the earth. When that precious, unadulterated blood of the Almighty God, dripping from Emmanuel's veins, he tore that soul out of him. He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? His face full of mockery spit, a crown of cruel mockery pulled out over his brow. His nails drove with Roman spikes, his back ribbon, until his ribs showed too, swaying on the cross, screaming, dying, sinner's death, the sin of the world upon him. And there, God ribbed his sides, tore his soul out of him, when he said, into thy hands I command my spirit. And he dropped his head in the earth, shut and belched out its rocks. There he is. There's God's covenant. There's the fulfilling of it. Mid-rendering rocks and darkening skies. My Savior bowed his head and died. The opening veil revealed the way to heaven's joys and endless day. Oh, Calvary, oh, Calvary. Jesus bled and died for me. Then he tore the soul of his own son, separated the covenant, and he sold the body into the ground. It laid there for three days and nights. It rose up. For it was not possible that my holy one shall see corruption. Neither will I leave his soul in hell. And his soul was his spirit that ascended into hell. And he rose down, God did, and picked up his body and gave him life. 
and took the body of Jesus and set it at his right hand in glory and sent back the Holy Ghost as a covenant. There you are. Don't fall short of that, brother. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're lost. That's the only... You won't have to worry about getting to heaven. If there's nothing in here supernatural, the doors can't unlock. You can walk there and bump your head against it. But if the Spirit of God is in there, the Spirit of God inside will unhinge the doors. Got to have the thing in here to unlock it, yonder. That's right. So you're already judged just on what you think about Jesus Christ. Now, here he comes, torn and riven, torn to pieces. His soul went to God. God blessed him. And then his soul returned back in the form of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That comes into every believer to sanctify, clean up the mind, clean up the heart, and leave a portion of the Holy Ghost in there, here and there. And when the Holy Ghost is given out, that same Holy Spirit that brought the body of Jesus out of the grave will rapture. And that covenant has to dovetail as he tore there and gave the body, went back to God, and the Spirit came back to the earth. Then your spirit will have to be the same kind of spirit or it'll miss that place going together. Amen. Yes, sir. Not because you make yourself, but because something, the love of God is swept into your soul that's tore every earthly idol out. There it is. And there's something that's breathed and calls to God. It's your soul in here calling out to the Heavenly Father. There you are. That gives you a faith and you become the seed of Abraham. You believe God's promise like Abraham did. Don't linger. Yet you believe it. Faithful. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong giving praise to God. And you can't stay safe from one revival to another. Then call yourself the seed of Abraham. You better consider something first. Don't misjudge anything. Stay straight with the word. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. When he told him he'd give him a son, he waited 25 years. Stronger all the time he grew in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. Didn't aim to get to preaching, but it just got to preaching in me. All right. God calling, electing. Now you might as well face it. There's people that will never be saved. There's people that will never be saved no matter what they do. You know that. There's people that's predestinated to be lost. There's people that's predestinated to be saved. All that's predestinated to be saved will be saved. Regardless. That, that don't go so good. It seems like you don't get it. Well, let's turn over. Let's, let's find it and see what God says. Let's get over. Let's get in the New Testament first. Give me a, uh, Romans 9 just a minute. And we'll see whether this is right or not. See whether God said that some was going to be lost and some it, it would be. You like the Word of God? Amen. Well, let's see what it says now. And now listen close. Take your time. Don't be in a hurry. Now watch Romans 9. Paul speaking, New Testament, taking many places in the Old, and you just writing down, also put down Jude 4 while you're there. Man of old, predestinated to this condemnation. Man turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Gone out at your worldly lust. Over in Timothy also, where it says, as Jambers and Jambers withstood Moses and Aaron, so will these. Resist the truth, man of reprobate mind. God said they'd be there, and they're here. Look at the false things. You go out here, go through the Pentecostal churches, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Holiness, everywhere you want to, you'll find people impersonating it. People making out like they are. Well, glory to God, hallelujah, woman said of the day, I got ten kids, but glory to God, the Lord called me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah, I'm going out to do it. He did not do no such a thing. 
He never did, and he never will, because he said he wouldn't. Now, but oh my, she thought so, yes, sir. God give her ten kids to raise. That's what she's supposed to do. Amen. All right. But the thing of it is, they get the stuff all gummed up under enthusiasm. Well, if they don't need anybody to teach me, glory to God, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, then the Holy Ghost was wrong when he said it set some in the church teachers. Amen. God put them in the church's teachers. Amen. That settles it. Amen. What do you put teachers in there if the Holy Ghost going to do all the teaching? Amen. All right. See, what people need is their brains baptized besides their water. That's right. Hey. All right. Excuse that sharp expression, but uh, I like to really let it soak in. We want a revival. And, brother, you've got to stir the thing up. Before you can do it, you've got to get Satan kicked away. Don't fuss with him. Take your grounds and stand there. Had to battle him around the world. And every other Christian ever stood for God has to battle him. But if you know what you're standing and what you know is to be the truth, it's thus saith the Lord, you can stand there. You say, well, glory to God, I got saved because I quit drinking. Glory to God, I had a shiver run down my back. I had a rushing mighty wind to hit me in the face. You believe that, Brother Branham? Sure. But I want to see where that rushing mighty wind come from first. <laughs> see? That's right. Truly, that shiver is all right, but I'm not saved because I had a shiver. And not because I had a rushing mighty wind. You don't believe in that, brother? Yes, I do. But wait a minute. Let's back up here just a little bit. The devil's got some counterfeits along there. I'm saved because I met God's conditions. He called me, and I knew he called me. I accepted him on his word. Therefore, I can tell Satan, thus saith the Lord. When Jesus is here on earth, he was God. He was Emmanuel. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. He never used any of his great gifts. When he met Satan, he said, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone. It's written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And he defeated him. That's it. Know the Scripture. Satan knows the two. But you've got to know how to rightly divide the Word of God. See, notice. Listen to Paul speaking. How many would accept Paul's doctrine? He said, If an angel taught anything else, let him be accursed. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. Listen to Paul, sure in his self see, putting so you will absolutely know that I have great heaviness and sorrow in my heart, for I could, I, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. You've heard say, oh, all the Jews is God's chosen people. That's not right. That's not right. The Jews are not God's chosen people. They, they aren't. Now, you listen to see if Paul didn't say the same thing. And he was a Jew. See, Abraham had 11 sons. You know that, didn't you? And they were all the seed of Abraham. There's all the seed of Abraham, but in Isaac thy seed shall be called. Not in the rest of them, not in Ishmael, and not in the other nine sons from the other uh, third wife he had. No, it was in Isaac was the seed called. Wait, I believe this is in the same chapter. Who were Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Now, he's talking about Israel now. now watch him what he says. Whose are the fathers, and of the, them who are part of the flesh, Christ come, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God taken none effect, for there are not all Israel which are Israel. Is that right? Then they're not all Israel which are the Jews there. They're not all Israel. What? Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. That don't make them Israelites. Now watch. What are you typing, Brother Branham? I'm typing the church. All that confess Christ is not Christians. 
All that go to church are not Christians. All of Abraham's seed wasn't, wasn't, had the promise. It was an elect. It was the promise. And the promise was foretold Abraham, and the elect of God was foreordained before the foundation of the world. See? Notice. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Not in the rest of the Jews, but in Isaac. To Isaac come Christ. That was Abraham's seed, is Christ. And then the seed of Abraham first wasn't through sexual seed. It was his faith that God reckoned. It is through faith in us to believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ brings us Abraham's seed. And Abraham was circumcised as a seal of promise to his faith. Now, he didn't receive it while he was circumcised. He received the promise before he was circumcised. Is that right, Elder? Where's brother, the other preacher? I see him. Say, uh, I guess he's taking recordings back. Our brother. Yeah. All right. He received the promise before he was circumcised. Romans 4 will tell you. Amen. He received the promise before he was circumcised. Then he was given circumcision as a seal of his obedience of faith. Amen. Now, when we say, that's why Billy Graham, Charles Fuller, and Billings, and all of them, while they're talking about them Baptist brethren, I told many of them, so Rufus Mosley and a whole bunch. I said, he said, well, we had that 20,000 converts in two weeks. They couldn't find 20 people. I said, they wasn't converted. Well, he said, they accepted Christ as personal Savior. I said, still they're not converted. That's right. You're not converted until the convert means to be changed. Amen. And look, Paul, Peter had believed on the Lord. He'd been baptized, been given power to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. And Jesus told him the night before the crucifixion, after you are converted, strengthen your brother. Amen. Is that right? <laughs> been both saved and sanctified and hadn't been converted. Amen. <laughs> That's Scripture. Oh, was he sanctified? Yes, sir. John 17, 17, sanctify them, Father, through the truth. You think he'd put that spirit in a vessel that wasn't fit? And they went out and cast out devils, come back, shouting. All right, Methodist. <laughs> Amen. They returned shouting, praising God, and said, Oh, the devil's is subject unto us. Oh, just a moment. Matthew 10. And he said, Don't rejoice because the devil's is subject unto you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is that right? Amen. Now, I want to quiet you down just a minute. And Judas was with him. Is that right? Judas was just as big a duck was in the puddle. He was shouting and rejoicing too. And he followed the church right on down till it come to Pentecost. But when it come to Pentecost to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he refused it and to betray Jesus. And that was the Antichrist. And that spirit today will come right down and teach justification by faith and everything and move right on down to the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then short colors. Exactly. And watch the ten virgins that went out. Five, all of them virgins. Five of them were foolish. Five had oil in their lanes. What is the oil? The Holy Spirit. See? That's right. They were all virgins. Lived good, clean lives. You say, well, brother, I don't go to dances. I don't go to shows. That's just some oil thing. Unless, unless there has been a supernatural. Amen. Not because you shouted. Not because you spoke with tongues. Not because you jumped up and down, not because you did this, but something supernatural Amen. has happened in here that's changed you Amen. and put you a seal of in God. You're anchored. Amen. That's right. Well, you don't believe, I believe in shouting, I believe in all these things, but that isn't the answer. The Methodists thought when they shouted, they had it, but they found out they were wrong. A lot of them shouted and didn't have it. The Pentecost come along. They spoke in tongues. They said, we got her. But they found out they were wrong. Many of them spoke in tongues. Had nothing. So I speak with tongue of man and angels. And have not love, it profit me nothing. They didn't have it. That's right. 
And that's the reason the whole world was deceived by it and through the other thing. That is the answer. Not any fleshly demonstration or emotion, but something has happened in here that's changed your whole opinion, changed your whole nature. You are converted. Not you, but Christ has come into you and converted you. Your nature's dead of the old man, and you're born again, and you're a new man. Watch. Amen. Say, I'm getting late here. Well, holler at me just a little bit back there, brethren, if I get this a little too long. I got to get the children of Israel down in here just in a minute, but I want to show you how this is God's business to do these things. You still love me? Yeah. All right. I just keep praying for me. All right. But just let me cool down just a little then. Now, just a moment. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That it is they which are the, the children of the flesh, those are not the children of God, but the children of the promise, oh, look at that, are counted for the seed. The children of the promise, promise what? What kind of a promise? That God promised before the foundation of the world. He called them, that's the seed. Not because you quit doing this and quit doing that and quit lying, quit stealing. That's just moral acts. A good citizen will do that. You can't call yourself a Christian yet. Until something in here has happened. Until you're regenerated. Uh, something has happened in here. Notice. For this is the word of the promise. As this time... I will come, and Sarah shall bear a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, listen to this now, even by our father Isaac, put on your jacket, get your helmet ready, this will turn you around. For the children being not yet born... This is Esau and Jacob. Neither having done good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election... I'm letting that soak a long time. Wake up now, just a little one. Esau and Jacob, before either child was born... For they even knew what was right and wrong, that the election of God might stand not of work, but of him that calleth. I thought you quit eating meat to get saved. You have nothing to do with it. If you're saved, God called you before the foundation of the world and saved you. Is that right? Now watch. As it is written, as it is said to her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Before either child was born, God said, I love one and hate the other one. Is that God's word? Amen. I'm not responsible for her. Nothing but to preach it. Now, Election is nothing you have to do. It's what God's done. God did it in Christ for you before the foundation of the world. All the Father has given me will come to me. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Excuse me. I'm not excited, but I'm happy. All the Father has given me will come to me. And he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood worthily, like you receive the Spirit, hath everlasting life. I'll raise him up in the last day. What you fearing? God has promised unconditional. That love of God's reigning in your heart, and you know that you've passed from death and life. You love everybody, and the whole world has become different to you. And she's anchored right there, and nothing moves you. Just be happy and move on. Glory to God. Let nothing turn you around. 
Or you might get out and get cold and get shook up a little bit. But that seed of God will remain true. The Bible said, though we disbelieve, yet he cannot. He's true. He stands faithful. Now watch. Let's read. What shall we then, what shall we say then? Listen, Paul. Is there unrighteousness in God? God forbid. Is there unrighteousness? For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, if it is not of him that willeth, or you say, glory to God, hallelujah, I'll get saved before I die. You will. God has something to say about that. Not him that will, no. So, nor him that runneth, what? But of God that showeth mercy. It's not him that runneth or him that willeth. It's God that showeth mercy. It's God's election. God does what he wants to. Now, notice. Just a little farther. I've got it marked up here with red letters so much all covered over to I just can't hardly get to see it. It's, it's, I've read it so much in here. For the... I don't know what that is there. It's a, yes, it's rubbed over. I see it's here. I've got it all blotted out with red ink in there. The scriptures, I'll get my other Bible tomorrow night, which saith, Pharaoh, even for these, this same purpose have I raised him up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be uh, declared into all throughout all the earth. God raised up Pharaoh and hardened his heart for that purpose. God raised up Judas Iscariot. He was born here, the son of perdition. Is that right? God told Esau and, and Jacob, before he was ever born, told his mother all about what was going to take place. One he had hated and the other he had loved. Is that true? So it's God who does all things in all things, and you have nothing to do with it. And if God has called you, the love of God is ringing in your heart, and all that His call will come to Him, and none of it will be lost. Amen. God's promised. He said, none of them shall be lost. All the Father has given me will come to me, and none of them is lost. But Judas is carried that the Scriptures might be fulfilled. And I'll raise them up at the last day. Now, you're, you said a while ago you were a Christian. What made you a Christian? Because God called you before the foundation of the world to be a Christian. And you become a Christian. Then you got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. You got eternal life. Why did He give you the Holy Spirit? As a seal of your faith. You had faith first. Now, you say, well, you said a while ago about Billy Graham and them Howard. Well, how many wants to accept Christ as personal Savior? Raise up your hand. Is that all right? Certainly that's all right. That's good. But that's just beginning. Then if you really believe it and really have accepted it in your heart and are taught right, then the Holy Spirit will come as a circumcision that He give Abraham after his faith. Amen. A confirmation. Now you say, people say, let's have a tearing meeting. Glory to God. Let's go back and say, glory to God. Let's tarry for the Holy Ghost. There is no such a thing. Tarry don't mean pray. Tarry means wait. How many knows that the word tarry means wait? Jesus said, wait up there in the city of Jerusalem till I, until the promise is given you. I don't know what they were doing. It's probably praying. I don't know. But never did they have a, a wait after that. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. All that, and when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. Is that right? See, no waiting. The Holy Ghost was there. And give them the baptism of the Holy Ghost and confirmation of their faith. And God had Abraham circumcised and confirmation of his faith. And uh, what was it? What is the Holy Ghost? Somebody tell me what the Holy Ghost is for. It's a sign. Is that right? What was circumcision? A sign. Is that right? right. A sign. God gave a sign that he had accepted Abraham. 
for circumcision. And when you say, I believe God, I believe Jesus Christ, then God gives you the baptism of the Holy Ghost as a sign that He's accepted your faith. Hallelujah! And then you're sealed in the kingdom of God, not to an next revival, but until the day of your redemption. Amen. Ephesians 4.30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. There you are. Now, quickly, about five minutes longer, let's go over to Genesis 45. Now, I want to take a, a wonderful little shortcut here to bring these children of Israel right down into the place where we pick them up tomorrow night and take them out. I'm sorry to be a little late tonight, but I had to get this starting off first. Now, Abraham received the promise. Isaac, come along. You know the sacrifices? I've tried to give you back that that church back there calling out election was of God just like it is today. He called Abraham by election. He calls the church by election. He gave Abraham the promise. Abraham believed it. And he calls the church today. You believe Jesus Christ. Then the first you believe. And then God had Abraham and his children, his seed circumcised as a sign. And he gives you the Holy Ghost today as a sign. What is the Holy Ghost today to a human being when it comes? It's the circumcised. Didn't, didn't Stephen say so in, in um, Acts the seventh chapter when he said, Oh, you uncircumcised the heart and the ears, you always do resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. Is that right? And the Holy Ghost is a circumcision. And what circumcision do? Cuts off surplus flesh. Amen. All the things of the world. It circumcises you away from the things of the world, the love of the world, the love of the flesh. The pride of life, it just circumcises you from that. You have nothing to do with it. It does it itself and puts you in love with Jesus Christ with an undying love. Amen. There's nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Paul said perils and trials and prisons and everything else, nothing present, nothing future can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And he's called you, circumcised you, put it you in him, and predestinated your eternal destination. If that ought to make Christians shout, I don't know what would do it. If that wouldn't wake the man up that it's in Christ, I don't know what would take to wake him up. I believe he's twice dead, plucked up of the root. Don't you? All right. Now, then he called, then he brought his seed down. The next thing he come down through Abraham, and then through Isaac, and then through Jacob, and then from Jacob to Joseph. Now watch. If we had time sometime to go into this, we will, but not now. Look. Election is in Abraham. Do you notice know, just those four patriarchs? And then it ceased. Broke up. Went out the twelve patriarchs and the tribes tribed off. Is that right? And will never did return again till it returned in one, the seed of Abraham. Then it come into the human being, which was Christ, but was glorified here on earth and lifted up into God, and the Holy Ghost come back to spread the whole nations to fill the earth with the knowledge of the Lord as deep as the heavens and Oh, that's the Holy Spirit today. Now what? Election in Abraham. Justification in Isaac. Grace in Jacob and perfection in Joseph. There's not one thing recorded against Joseph. That's the perfection. The three earthly stages of the pilgrimage of the children of Israel. And the fourth was when they went into the promised land, which was the millennium. And the three stages of the Gentile church. This week, God being willing, I can bring it through the Bible and show you that we're in our third stage now, ready to go into the millennium in the time of Joseph. Now, watch when everything heaped up in Joseph. What? A perfect man. The one who was born of his father, loved of his fathers, hated of his brother. Now, look quickly now, because I've got to hurry. Give me your undivided attention. Loved of his father, hated of his brother. The Lord Jesus. Watch Jesus acting out in every character in there. Look at Joseph, the perfect one. Or oh, we could spend weeks on him. Look, hated of his brother, loved of his father. Why? He was a spiritual man. He saw visions, could interpret dreams. He was spiritual. His little his brother said, Nonsense. Get away. I look at the churches today. Watch the spiritual side. The Lord Jesus in his church today, he's hated by all the offsprings. See? Just exactly. Made fun of. Call them fanatics. Everywhere. Well, it has to be. Here's the antitype. Here's the shadow of it. You say, well, Brother Branham, if I receive the Holy Spirit, they'd all laugh at me. 
Well, if you didn't, you didn't receive it. You have to be hated of the world. Jesus said they called the master a house to be Elzebub. How much more were they called his disciples? See? They're the household. Now, he was, and watch. Then he was loved, and his father, which we can't move, uh, leave from this, his father gave him a coat of many colors. Is that right? Now, if you watch that robe without seam, which represented the Holy Spirit that covered his being. And today, it's the Holy Spirit that covers the church, the robe of many colors, and there's seven colors in the rainbow. See, and it's seven perfect colors is all the colors we have. And they blend together, making the rainbow, and a rainbow in the Bible means a covenant. And God made his covenant with Noah for no more water, but the fire next time. He gave him the rainbow sign, and we still have it. Is that right? Now, if you turn, if I had time to get these other scriptures, to Revelation, the first chapter, and when John saw him standing, one like unto the Son of Man, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, which was the seven church ages, and we started off with Ephesus and ending up in Lady Osea, the lukewarm church age, where we are now, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof going to church and having people come in and saying accept Christ and putting their name on the book but denying the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power and miracles and signs and wonders and making fun of it. The lady of sin, church age, which is spewed from God's mouth and the elect taken up. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, something gets into my soul when I think of it, friends. Oh, the world in its condition today. And there he was, standing there, watch. And he was to look upon as Jasper and Sardis stone. What was Jasper? Was Reuben stone? What was Sardis? Benjamin, the first and the last. He was to look upon as the first and the last. And, and a rainbow around his head over the seven golden candlesticks. A rainbow, a covenant that God had made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Christ, to the church by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the robe of the seven colors that was upon Joseph, that's upon Jesus, that's upon the church today, protected. The body was covered up by the robe. And the church is not you, it's the Holy Ghost has got you covered with the blood. God's covenant predestinated before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah! I just had to let that out. All right, it's about to burst me. Notice, let me tell you, you might think I'm crazy. If I am, I'm happy. Leave me alone. All right, let me tell you something. Oh, how can I keep from being happy and know what I know? How can I hold it and know what I know? I'm trying to get it to people. My, and make anybody happy. My, all right, there he was. And Jacob was, and Joseph was this tight, the cover and the father, the father gave him the robe. Hallelujah. Don't you remember when Jesus was baptized, went straight out of the water and rolled, the heavens was open unto him, and the Holy Ghost was descending like a dove and went upon him and said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He never performed a miracle until then. Then right into the wilderness for temptation, and right out healing the sick and the powers of God. That's the church. When it's baptized, it's roped with the Holy Ghost, with power. Yeah. Oh, my, the very phenomenal of Sarah's womb being dead before Isaac comes. God just let it go on. She was 60 years old when she got the promise. She was 90 years old before the seed ever was conceived in her. Perfectly, absolutely phenomenal. And the man is born again is a phenomenal. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not accepting or raising up your hand like this. It's a gift of God. Amen. Phenomenal. Born again. Taken out of this world in the realm of senses. Amen. Yes, sir. Why? Because you deserve it. Because God promised it. That the promise might be sure according to the election. Then Joseph was sold for almost 30 pieces of silver by his brothers. The Jewish church betrayed Joseph. Today, what is it in this church? A betrayal. They're getting documents. They're going to try to have a... Well, now, you just keep this on your mind. They're going to have a confederation of churches. 
the churches of Christ of America as already confederating with all the churches, and they're going to have a band here someday that'll shut out to fight communism, which will hook up with Catholicism, with the Protestant church and the Catholic church together, and the inner denominations who stand out for the truth and get away from that dogma that they've got will be persecuted. The mark of the beast, and the seal of God. The showdown will soon come. And brother, if that's not in there, you'll be deceived as sure as the world. Cause it'll look so nice. You'll say, now it's communism made a, uh, a made a, uh, for the world. Well, let us make a, 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 another agreement and bring all the Christian, Christianize the world back. And it looks so good that people will jump into it. See? They'll confederate the churches and bring, try to make Christianity one unit. And the Bible says in Revelation that he give his power and everything, and he made an image unto the beast, and exercised all the power the beast did before him. Amen. Sure it is. Wish we had time to hook revelations in this thing, but we haven't. See, to see where it's at, you're right here in the end of time, brother. We're at the end of the age. Then they sold Joseph 30 pieces of silver, sold him into a ditch for him to be dead. He was taken up, sent in, and, and while he was in his prison in there, he, there was two men, a butler and a, and, a, and a baker. And one of them was lost and the other one was saved by Joseph, who gave the dream and interpreted it. And the same thing when Jesus was hanging on the cross, there's a thief on one side and a thief on the other, and one was lost and the other and saved. Just exactly. Then he was taken in before Pharaoh and interpreted the dream and was made the right hand man of Pharaoh. No man could see Pharaoh without coming to Joseph. And a perfect type of Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, and no man comes to God except by Christ. Just exactly the perfect type. There, and notice, here's another thing. You Gentile people, now according to the seed and the elect, Joseph was given a Gentile bride. He, he was rejected of his brothers and turned and took a Gentile bride. Is that right? Amen. He gave him, Pharaoh gave him, the priest of Or, a daughter for a bride. And he married a Gentile woman that produced Ephraim and Manassas, which was joint heirs into the kingdom, into the patriotic promise. Notice how perfect that Jesus rejected the Jews, sent back the Holy Spirit, and they laughed at him and made fun of him and said they're drunk on new wine. Is that right? And Jesus said, you can blaspheme me and get by with it, but if you speak one word against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven you. And those Jews come up there and said, well, those men are full of new wine. Ha, ha, ha. And they made fun of them. And not no more than 30 years or better from then, till Titus besieged the walls and they beat one another's children and they massacred them and burnt the temple. According to God's word, it's never been raised until the days of the Gentiles be done. And then I'm fixing to visit Jerusalem the next few weeks. And there are the old ruins and the weeping walls there where they've been scattered all over the world because God told them that they would do it and they come down and did it. That's right. Oh, my. To think of the, the curse of rejecting the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Spirit was poured out and they rejected it. And when the Jews rejected it, the Gentiles received it which was a type of the bride, he said he would call a people out of the Gentiles for his name. Amen. That little girl sitting back there used to be a boy, but she's a Branham now. She's my wife. And the, the bride of Jesus Christ will be Miss Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Baptized in his spirit and his name. Filled with his power, robed in his righteousness. Hallelujah. There she is. And now notice, that was the Gentile bride. Now to read the rest just before closing. Here's the saddest story you've ever seen at the end time where we're ending now. The Gentile bride has already been chosen, been taken out. The thing's about finished. Now listen over here. And the 41st chapter. And it came to pass. This is at the end of the age of the Jews now. And we're closing. At the end. Two full years. Pharaoh. Now wait a minute. I got, I got the wrong chapter here. I'm pretty sure. 
45. I meant to say instead of 41. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried and caused every man to go away from him. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren, the ones that had rejected him uh, just a moment before he leave. Joseph, after all these years that had been down there, there rose a famine over in the homeland, God moving. Poor little Joseph had become the right-hand man. And here his brothers who had sold him, he had saw a vision of them and coming bowing before him. And they called him a dreamer and a vision seer and ki- tried to kill him. Just as they, Jesus predicted to them Jews of what they was and what they had done and what would be about the master of the house sent his own son, his servants, and how they killed it and everything like that. But what would that uh, the Lord of the harvest do when he did come and find those wicked servants? Now, just a moment. Here's Joseph, a perfect type, standing there like the Jews returning in the last days at the end, coming to the millennium. When the Jews will be saved again, and they look, and Joseph, you know how he was sent down there, how the Israel sent down his children. They got a little corn. They were starving to death, and Joseph had interpreted the king's dream and how and he had put up the corn, the only place in the world that had food, perfect of the church today. The only place spiritual food is given out is in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You can go take some old church creed and recite a few apostles, creeds and whatever you want to, but brother, the Spirit lays in the born-again church of the living God is the only where there's food. And them Jews is going to recognize that one of these days and they're coming. Now you notice, then when he come, he said, he's seen little Benjamin and how, you know how he done there and understood how that his father, his mother had given birth to this child and then had died, a little Benjamin. And he's seen his brother and they didn't know who he was. They thought he was a great prince and they were scared. And then when he sent back and he said, well, who are you? And they said, we are the sons of one man, which is uh, Jacob, which is old, you know, Israel, and which was the blessed of the Lord and so forth. And then he heard that his dear old daddy was still alive. Listen to what he said here. And he made himself known to them when he closed up the doors. His heart, look at the love of God there, still calling. There, those Jews standing there, poor boys, they're starving. Their father was starving. He said, go down and get a little more corn or we'll starve to death. He kept Benjamin down there for a token. And you know how it was, how he stood before him. And then he looked and he seen Benjamin. He couldn't refrain any longer. He made every man go from him. Get away, and poor Joseph stood there. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother. And his brothers had just told him, said, we have one brother which is not, that was killed by beast. And he was talking right to his brother. That was his brother Joseph who was standing there. And he, he made them all leave. Then he revealed himself, and he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. And they were scared of the patriarchs. They were afraid. He said, don't be afraid. And he began to scream so loud till even over in Pharaoh's palace they heard him screaming. Heard his screams and cries. He run down and threw his arms around little Benjamin and hugged him and kissed him and fell on his neck and began crying and said, you mean to say that my poor old daddy's still alive up in Canaan? What a feeling. What the love of God that shed abroad him. My daddy's still alive, and I'm giving him some corn. So, oh, and he screamed to the top of his voice, I wonder what that'll be the day when our Lord Jesus breaks comes through the eastern horizon, coming back to the earth again. Hallelujah. There he screamed and wept, that great prince standing there, and the patriarch said, he said, don't feel bad. He said, God sent me. See the Holy Spirit, how love divine will do. Said, God sent me down here. Don't feel bad at yourself. Said, God sent me down here to preserve life for these times. And what did God send him here for but to preserve life? What's the Holy Spirit here for tonight but to preserve life? He was rejected of the Jews and sent over here to the Gentiles to preserve life. Have you got it tonight, my friend? Then he says, is my father still alive? And he sat up there with wagons and oxes and so forth. And poor old blind Israel come out, the old prophet coming out like that. And he heard that Joseph was alive. He wept and he said, oh, bless God, I'll see my boy once more. Feeling 
when he brought him down there, he met him, his old blind, feeble fingers moving out like that, and got a hold of Joseph's face, and they knelt upon something there and began to weep and cry, father and son hugging one another. Oh, my, when I think about it, the prodigal tonight that's away from God out yonder in the sin, brother, eating in hog pens running around over the world. Why, why wouldn't you, during the time of this revival, if you've wasted your life in these years and rightiest living and your substance, why not you now turn in your heart to the Father? If you have done what's wrong, why don't you meet him tonight halfway down the path and throw your arms around and say, you mean to tell me, Brother Branham, God still loves me? He's looking for you tonight. He's watching for you. The Holy Spirit's here to preserve life, to keep you, to give you the blessing, to select you. And if you've been elected in God, you've come here tonight for some purpose. You say, Brother Branham, I count myself that. Why did you come to church tonight? What made you come? You think the devil would ever drug you to church? No, sir. The devil would drug you away from it. God has been calling. It's the Father calling to you tonight. Now, you have a place in God, and God has called and called and called. If you do not receive that place, there's so many places counted out here for each one. And God has predestinated uh, back under that this place should be. Now, if you fail to take that place, someone will take it in your place. So now, if you haven't took your place tonight, may God grant tonight that you will take your place. Tomorrow night, we're going, they stayed in e Egypt there for years. And now tomorrow night, we're going to bring them out under the sacrificial lamb and bring them up as far as Jordan and then take them over the river into the other land in the wilderness. May the Lord bless each one of you. This has been hard tonight. It took a long time. It's been scraping and pulling, about an hour and a half here or more, and, and going through the Scriptures, harsh with it. But, brother, sister, can you realize tonight that it's the election in God? How many believes in the election in God? How many believes that God elects you and calls you? He's the one who does it. Now, are you happy? Do you believe? Do you believe tonight that you can stand now tomorrow and say, Satan? You've pushed me around. You've done this and done that. And in my heart all the time, there's been something beating, telling me towards God. Now I realize what my calling is. I'll never be satisfied out there. I can't be satisfied out there because God has called me. So I'm fixing now to throw these things aside and come to my Heavenly Father. I'll live with Him. How many in here would like to say, Brother Bill, from this night on, I'm pledging myself to God that I'm going to serve Him. I know we're at the end of the road. And I know that we haven't got very much more time left, but by God's grace tonight, I mean to make a clear sweep, and I'm going to serve God. Would you raise your hand? God bless your heart. All right. How many that feels like it should say, Brother Bill, I haven't got it in my mind just exactly yet, but will you pray for me that God will have me there at that day, that God will give me one more call in my heart, and I'll come if you'll just... Call me one more time. I'll come. Will you raise your hand? Are you that much concerned about it tonight? God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. Someone else now will say, Rick, God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you, and God bless you, young lady. Someone else say, Brother Branham, I'm not what I ought to be tonight. I know I'm not. I've grieved, my Lord, but there's something in my heart has always told me I ought to be a Christian, and I want to serve God. Is that person here tonight has never made that start? Now, I want you to be honest with me right now in the closing. And know this, that something through your life has told you that you should serve God. You've felt like that for a long time. You have never made the start yet, but something has told you that. I, I'm not one of the persons who will run back there and pull you up here. No, no. If the Holy Spirit, through the preaching of the Word, doesn't do it, doesn't do me any good. <laughs> That's right. You have to make your choice. But will you be honest enough with me and say, Brother Bill, there's been something in me for years or times or whatever it is that's called me, that's told me, seemed like I ought to turn to God, and I just haven't done it yet. You pray for me, Brother Bill, and I will be man or woman enough to do it. Will you raise your hand? Every word of building, huh? It feels that it, God is, God bless you. Someone else say, something has called at my heart, and I have never made my surrender yet. Just raise your hand. Say, I, I'm the one. I've never yet become a Christian, but I, I, I want to. I want to, and I want you to pray that, that God won't turn me down until I make my decision. Will you do it? Raise your hand. God bless you, sir. That's mighty fine. If somebody's raise your hand, say, I, I want you to pray, Brother Bill, and I, I won't turn God down. God bless you, sir. That's, that's fine. Now, someone else. 
is there someone else in here? Now, be honest. Now, look. What if the doctor comes to your house before daylight? He takes your pulse. Moves back to not. He'll never come out of that one. He's done. Oh, how you wished you to put that hand up. It might have meant something. Then pray for me, brother. I don't know who you are unless you let me know. Church don't know who you are. But if you raise up your hand, God will recognize that. That won't save you. No. But it'll give you that much of a start. Amen. It'll give you that much start. Then maybe before the revival's over, you'll give your heart to Christ. Amen. Now, this has been rough tonight. We'll try to get down and more into solid down into the Word in the beginning. Uh, I mean, as we go on. Is there one more? It's been five. Raise your hand. Somebody else. Could have had just six or seven. Now, I, I want you to be honest. Yes. God bless you, young lady. Now, I know there's one more person in here that should have your hand up. Now, mm -hmm. it, just put your hand up. Say, Brother Bill, pray for me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not coming back to where you are. I'm going to pray for you right here. Mm -hmm. And then just say, Remember me now. And I am not a Christian, but I've always felt that I should be. And I, I know I'm not a Christian. Is there another one now? Put your hand up. I, I'm fixing the clothes. Get to the piano, Teddy, if you will. Someone say then, Brother Bill, remember me that my life will be closer to God. I, I don't want to be, live this halfway life in this lukewarm condition. I want to really, my heart be burning on fire. Pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. You, you. That's fine. That's good. God bless you. I see your hands going up. Look, if God will hear my prayer to open the eyes of the blind, Unstop the ears of the deaf. Make those who are crippled, congressmen, kings, potentates, monarchs, crippled, just straight now. Look around the world. Millions, millions. I visually say this with true from my heart. Around 10 million people that I know heard the message. 10 million people. Of all nationalities. I've spoke before 10 and 15 different nationalities at once. Have to go through 10 or 15 interpreters before they even get to say another word just like that through the interpreter. And see as many as 100,000 and see as many as 30,000 at one time come to Christ. 30,000 converts at one time. Durban South. And I'm going to a meeting now where 300,000 people will be said. And I say this from my heart. Did you ever hear me predict anything in the name of the Lord but what was just exactly that way? Ask wherever you want to, anywhere through the world. And look at the hundreds and hundreds of things that he said. Amen. Surely I know what I'm speaking of. Not for myself, Christ in here. And I'm telling you the truth, friends. If you die without being born again, you're lost. Amen. Jesus said, except a man be born of the water and spirit, he will in no wise enter the kingdom. No matter how good, how much you paid in, what church you belonged to, what your affiliation was, what your social standing was, what your mother, father was, what your pastor was, unless a man is born again, he will never see the kingdom of God. We taken that corn the other day. You seen from over here at the agriculture. One of them was a perfect grain of corn. Every amount of calcium, everything was in this grain, was in this grain. One was growing in the field, and the other one wasn't. A handful out of each. They buried them. There wasn't a one that was made with every ingredient that's in the other one, made shaped alike and everything. Not a one of them come up, but every one of these come up. Why? They had a germ of life in them. There's men and women here tonight now and over the world that's going to the churches, belongs to church, professing to be Christians, and hasn't got the germ of life in them. They can't come up. There's no way for them to resurrect. Don't be deceived, friends. Weigh yourself out. It's up to you. It's in you. It's your decision. May the Lord bless you while we bow our heads. Father, in this undertaking tonight, I have had to say harsh and rough things, cutting hard. But you said the gospel is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the mire of the bone and discerner of the thoughts of the mind. God forbid that we should have anything less than that. Now we thank Thee for the election. We thank Thee that Thou hast called us. And now in our hearts the Holy Spirit has kept us all these years. How we thank Thee. Amazing grace to think that we were come up out of the gutters of sin way back in the days. 
and how that you've been good to us. And we love these men and women that's here in the world now, knowing that it's just a few more turns of the sun. It's to be too late then. One of these days, it'll be too late. They'll be cut off and that quick without remedy, without mercy. And you said that you only laugh in the calamities of them. To think of this world, one of these days, the howling winds are going to blow across this old world when it's blown up with an atomic bomb laying out yonder in the sphere of the sun. And the howling winds are blowing across 500 years from tonight. And there will be tombstones hid in that sand with maybe our names on them. Laying out in her, whirling and howling, the winds of hot, blistering heat from the sun. But where will our poor soul be? God made this might be the night that some eternal destination is decided. Amen. Grant, Lord, that every sinner in here, those men and women and young women and so forth that raised their hands and said they were sinners and they wanted to be remembered in prayer, oh God, may the Holy Spirit grant that just now. And may they accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, Lord, that these backsliders and these that's cold and got away from you, may they come running tonight like a bunch of children that starved to death, running up to the table of God, saying, I want to be fed. And may you do it, Lord. And thank you for these dear saints of God that lift up their hands into tears and prayer and going on. They have stayed faithful to this hour. Bless these words tonight, Lord, though they've run from one side of the Bible to the other and all misformed, and maybe you can fix it out in their mind, Lord. It's been new to me the first time for seven years, Lord, to try these, and I pray now that tomorrow night you'll bring us all back with even more, and may the Holy Spirit be here, and many of these here tonight make a decision and be saved, come back tomorrow night rejoicing and happy. Grant it, Lord falling upon the Father's neck as Joseph did, Lord, kissing the Father, oh, and saying, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Grant it, Lord. May something take place now. We pray this blessing that you dismiss us from this meeting, but never from your, from your presence, and may we return happy, rejoicing tomorrow night, bringing precious sheaves. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Christian friends. I'm sorry that I've kept all this time. I'm very sorry. Tomorrow night I aim to let out at 9 o'clock if possible. I had to talk just a little harsh. I couldn't help it. You love me anyhow, don't you? I do. I love you. And it's only for your good. Now shall we stand? Or take the name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you. Get some sinner, man. Bring him out. Come back. Tell the pastors, come on now. Let's join together and have an old-fashioned revival. We'll be straightened out in a night or two now, so we'll go ahead in a good time. Shake one of his hands now. Heaven, precious name. the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you from now until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you now. You're dismissed. God's love is blessed. Now all you members of the tabernacle, shake hands with these people here. Be sure that every one of you shake their hands. Welcome them back. May the Holy Spirit do the same. Now just make up. Forget all your differences and make up. All right. At the name of Jesus, bow me.